In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are transformed water into wine, showing the world the power of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you transformed us into God's holy people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you shower us with the gifts of the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight 
and your land exposed. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all your lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim Proclaim his his glorious glorious deeds to all the nations. Abundance announces salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim his glorious deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim his glorious deeds to all the nations. A reading from this first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another mighty deeds, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another varieties of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars where the Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, 
Everyone serves good wine first, and then when the people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this at the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. They've got me doing a little bit of everything, so, you know. I was reading up on uh, stuff with my homily helps, and a couple of theologians and some, uh, some scriptural scholars call this uh, Epiphany 2.0. The original Epiphany, which we celebrated a couple of weeks ago, but this is... Epiphany 2.0. This is where Jesus, as a man, takes it upon himself to present himself to his people. Now the difference I was trying to figure out was, why a wedding? Why was this spot chosen as the beginning of his ministry? As I was doing some research, I, I found out that weddings at this time were not social events. There, there was definitely celebration, but it wasn't get all your friends and family together, get all, you know, as many people as you can get, let's see how many presents we can get, and you know, that kind of thing. It was all about family, with a few close friends sprinkled in. So Jesus looks at this situation, and I think at first he doesn't want any embarrassment for the bride and groom because that, was, that would be all they talk about for years to come, how at their wedding they ran out of wine. The second is, and we all know the story, mom. Mom looks at him and says, well, okay, mom, let's see what I can do. But it's also about the importance of marriage the importance of what brings people together, that brings two people together for life. Death do us part, sickness and health. If you look in scripture, this isn't the only place we see the importance of marriage. And this is what the church uses to say that uh, the sacrament of marriage is scriptural because God chose, Jesus chose a wedding to perform a miracle. It blesses the wedding. So, but all through the readings in the New Testament, we hear about Christ as the bridegroom and the church as his bride. And today in the first reading, we hear about God taking the people that he loves as his espoused. Marriage is important because it brings people together in a particularly holy way. Two people who are living together. Yeah, well, we're living together. What's the next question? So when are you going to get married? Because marriage is the next step. Marriage is the important step. Marriage is what it takes to combine the union of two souls, or a God with his people, or a savior with his church. And that's not to say that other ways of life are not important. The single life is important, the religious life is important, and all three things have to coexist. You can't, ha you can't work one without the other two. But there's a lot more married people so we tend to look at that a little more closely. Marriage is important because of what it gives to each other and what it gives to the world. And what God gives to his people and what Christ gives to his church. It will always be one of the most important things that happens in this civilization. 
And that's, that's the best way to look at it. Marriage is important to civilization. But marriage can't exist in a vacuum. My marriage to my wife can't exist by myself and herself together off to the side. Any marriage, any married couple out here cannot exist in a vacuum. We all exist together. And by existing together, we then have a duty to pray for each other. It's never going to be, it's never going <laughs> to, I'm going to date myself, it's never going to be Donna Reed or, you know, the Brady Bunch. It's going to be hard because this world is hard. But God gave himself to his people. And Christ gave himself to his church. The least we can do for each other is to give ourselves back to God as close to that ideal as possible. But for us here, the most important thing we can do is pray. Pray for each other. Pray for the married souls that you know. Pray for the married souls you don't know. We know how important marriage is to God and to the church. So let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray for each other. Let's pray for the married souls throughout the world that they can give that married connection that they share to the church and to their God. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing God's goodness and confident in his love, we bring to him our prayers. For the church, during this week of prayer for Christian unity, may we look to Christ to guide us to greater holiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they support religious tolerance so all people may worship freely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King, all citizens may work to fight injustice everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing for marriage, that they may be a sign of love that God has for us all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone here to open their hearts to the Lord's calling, to spend time with him in our Adoration Chapel. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, including Shirley Barrett and Henry Geerling, and especially the ill and the elderly, and for those providing support and refuge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, including Mary Louise Myring, a former parishioner, Lynn Handing, a former parishioner, and Don Bernhardt, a former parishioner and husband of Norma, that they join with the triumphant in the heaven giving praise continuously to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers we have spoken and the prayers of our hearts, which we bring to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever to praise you in your mighty works, through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ferdinand, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, my name is Patrick Hale. I am a fourth grader at All Saints Academy. Our school would like to congratulate fifth grader James Besmer for winning the holiday card contest hosted by St. Louis Dairy Council. James was the grand prize winner for his age group, and his artwork was featured on the cover of St. Louis Dairy Council's yearly Christmas card. Thank you to Mrs. P, our art teacher, for allowing us to enter the contest. St. Ferdinand Parish, today, tomorrow, forever. Additional announcement, the rectory office will be closed on Monday, January 17th, in observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And uh, as a reminder, Thursday night catechism is ongoing, Thursday nights, 7 p.m. in the Duchesne Center, and this week's uh, topic will be the sacrament of baptism. Knock on wood that no one gets sick or anything, but that is the plan. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Closing hymn, Come Holy Ghost, number 453. Come Holy Ghost. Come Holy Ghost, greet.